This is the first impulse video for vector dynamics. It's the only impulse video I'm going to do because it's so close to momentum problems. And let's start off with a, a, a rather simple situation and then make it overly complicated. So what we have here is we have a ground and a simple box here which weighs 15 kilograms. That box is being pulled to the right, let's say, by some force F. Uh, some characteristics we should know between the box and the ground is that there's a coefficient of friction, static friction, of 0.4, and there's a coefficient of friction, kinetic friction, that is, of 0.2. So just to kind of list off some characteristics, obviously it's on Earth so we don't need to know about the, the gravity. Um, to list some characteristics about the force, I'm going to draw, draw a quick little graph to relate both force and time, which is a typical thing to do in an impulse problem, and typically a momentum problem as well. So I'm going to start off actually like this, our y being force, let's just say newtons, and our x being time, and let's just say seconds. Just to give us some numbers and a place to start, I would say that you reach 100 newtons in 5 seconds and it all goes in a linear fashion. Reaching up to the peak, we don't care what happens after 5 seconds, okay? So this is how the force is applied to this box, this 15 kilogram box. You have the relationship between the box and the ground. Let's dive right in. So first off, what we need to do is we need to look at this and say, okay, we need to know when this guy is going to start moving because it's not going to start moving right away. There is a point that it will start moving, but not right away. Let's find out when that is. So diving in, we know that the force of friction is going to be mg and then our static friction. You're going to have mass, which is going to be 15 kilograms. You're going to have gravity, which is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. And then you have your coefficient of friction static friction that is 0.4. If I do the algebra for you, you'll find out that that equals 58.86 newtons. So now that we see that relationship, you see that this is where, this is how much resistance is going to occur due to friction. Hold on one second. So now, that's the maximum amount of resistance that we're going to reach, and it will happen when? Well, we go to our little equation right here, and our equation is y equals 20x. I just got that. It's just a linear equation from the two different points and from, you know, from 0, 0 to 5, 100. y equals 20x. It's a linear equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to adjust the situation so that we can negate the resistance due to the kinetic friction in this, in this like situation. So let's see if I can just draw it for us real quick. What's going to happen is that, first of all, let's calculate it out so I can show you. 58.86 newtons is going to equal some 20 times x. We solve for that x. x is going to equal 2.943 seconds. So you know after almost three seconds we are going to actually start moving so really it, it's a good amount of time into it. it's almost it's almost maybe like it's oh, three-fifths the way so sixty percent of the way past halfway all of this in this direction is what I would call static to the right that's your motion now exactly how much motion well, let me draw us the exact same graph, but I'm going to show you how you can see where kinetic is, the kinetic friction is. It's a bit larger this time. I'm not going to put a bunch of labels on it. I'll put, you know, 5 and 100. I'll do that. Okay, so at right here, 2.943. Let's ignore this portion right here. Let's ignore that, since that's all static. 
Now we have a kinetic friction factor of 0.2, which is half. Well, we know right here is where the static friction actually met. So just using the, the fact that the coefficient of friction, is, the static friction was 0.4 and the kinetic friction is 0.2, same governing equation, you could say that force of friction equals mg kinetic which we know the only difference is that this is 0.2 instead of 0.4 so we know it's actually half so that that would make it 29.43 I did the math beforehand so 29.43 so we know that it's gonna be somewhere in here that there's some sort of that's where our resistance is gonna remain at it's no longer gonna be up here where it was in the static situation it's gonna be right here once it starts to slide so this is what I'm going to call resist, like uh, uh, friction resistance. So force of friction, you know, kinetic. Okay, this is resistance. This whole area right here. No motion results of this area. However, and this is what we typically call F net or the net force, and this is what will cause your motion. And this kind of graph is typical whenever you're looking at uh, momentum or impulse problems. Okay, so how fast does it get? We know when it happens. We know when when this shift happens at 2.943, but how fast does it get by the end of the fifth second, let's say? Well, we can calculate that out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this graph really quick so that it's going to compensate for this little force of friction and then I can use a simple integral to solve it. Back to calculus, right? Okay, so here's your graph. It's going to look something along the lines of this. Your 2.943 is going to look something... Uh, the graph will look something like here, maybe? That'll be like 2.943, something like that. This is still static. Ignore all this. You can actually ignore all this. This is static. The function for this is no longer just y equals 20x. What I'm doing is I'm saying y equals 20x minus this section, 29.43. Minus 29.43. You're probably sitting there going, why are you doing that? Well, I'll show you in a second. There's your five. Remember, what color I use? I use pink. This is your F net right here. This is your F net. Doesn't this look easier to use an integral to solve for that area under the curve? Okay, well, let's do that. Integral between 5 and 2.943. And then this equation up here 20x. 20x. Minus 29.43. If I run through the the calculus for you, you'll get something along the line of like 10x squared minus 29.43x. Evaluated at the same ones, yada yada and yada yada. Running through the numbers, I'm just going to do the algebra for you. You end up getting 102, 102.85. Okay. Now, one thing that we should remember for momentum is that impulse or the integral of f dx or f ds or dt or whatever the case may be, this has to be time is the same thing as g2 minus g1. g1 was stationary. g2 is not. We can actually relate g2 
as mv and we could calculate the velocity in fact let's do that real quick 102.85 equals 15 times v if you calculate that out v is equal to uh, 6.8567 I think meters a second anyway I know I'm a little bit all over the place but all I'm saying is that you can calculate a lot by using these different methods um, this was a nice little trick to do simplified our math made our life a little bit easier anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully my mic sounds a little bit better this time hope you have a nice day